Happy NBA Free Agency Day, Heat fans. It is starting this afternoon, 6 p.m. Eastern time is when teams can officially go out and sign for agents not on their own team. And time to talk about the latest surrounding the Miami Heat heading into a monumental day in the NBA circles. First, I want to make sure we are subscribed to the channel because we are going to break down any news that Miami has, whether it be re-signing Haywood Highsmith, signing a free agent elsewhere, or a trade rumor, or a blockbuster trade Miami might make to finally improve this roster. We will have you covered with everything, so lock us in. We're actually also going to be live later today on the Heat Report 2 for the start of free agency, so come join us then 20 subs away from 12k and i said if we hit 12k before 6 p.m eastern time today i'm doing a beer bong so come on hit that sub button all right let's talk about the latest surrounding the miami heat though because there is a lot to talk about here we'll start with the news from yesterday because we have clarity on now three free agents for the miami heat on friday Josh Richardson opted in to his contract for three million this upcoming season. I'm okay with that move. I think Jay Rich for three mil off the bench is worth it, so he is back. But Caleb Martin ultimately declined his player option. That is no surprise. It was 7.1 mil for this season, and he is going to get damn near 13, 14 mil in free agency, and I doubt he comes back to Miami. All signs are pointing to him leaving, so I wish Caleb Martin the very best on his future endeavors. Thomas Bryant, he opted out. That is, I wouldn't say a stunner, but I'm a little surprised. So it was $2.8 million. So the Heat now don't have $2.8 million allotted to Thomas Bryant, which is really good because he stinks and he wasn't going to play this year. And I think maybe that's why he opted out. He drafted a center. Um, he didn't really get to play a lot last year. So he's probably like, well... I don't know what I'll get on the open market, but maybe I can find a role for myself to actually get meaningful playing time. And that's kind of why Thomas Bryant opted out, in my opinion. I'm not going to complain because I did not want him back on this roster. And that's $2.8 million that he can allot in a vet min contract for someone else. Lastly is Kevin Love. Love opted out of his $4 million contract, which... Kind of was a surprise in its own right. It seems like Miami and Love both want to reunite and... The reports from Heat insiders, as well as Adrian Wojnarowski, who had the initial Kevin Love report of him opting out, is that they do want to get a new deal done. And I think it's going to be a cheap one. Like, I think it's going to be a two, maybe an even three-year contract where Kevin Love gets more, big more years, but the salary is the absolute minimum. So it saves Miami maybe 800 k to a million dollars on this upcoming season which you might say well what's the even point but like it does matter for miami like every cent matters in terms of this roster building under the new cba because as things currently sit they're 1.4 million dollars above the first apron honestly it's unlikely that the heat get below that and there'll be a first apron team this season but it gets closer to that right they're $9.4 million away from crossing the second apron. I don't expect Miami to cross the second apron whatsoever. So I would like to see Miami stay underneath that range. They also haven't assigned Kalal Ware, so that hasn't counted. Kalal Larson, um, there's some contracts that also have to be accounted for, which kind of lead me to the next conversation around Haywood Highsmith, because it seems like the Heat also want to bring back Haywood. And I'll ask you, do you want to re-sign Haywood Highsmith? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, I would like to re-sign Haywood. I originally thought he was going to get like $8 million a year in free agency. Like I thought a 3 for 24 deal was coming from an outside team that wanted to take the chance on his defense and shooting. Because he did shoot 39% from 3 this past season. And... He did really well, and Michael Scotto had that report like a month and a half ago that he'll command $8 million. and I was kind of with him. I was like, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Like a team with cap space, like a Detroit or an Orlando that wants just more shooting and um, defense, like why wouldn't they offer $8 mil for a solid role player like Highsmith who has played in the NBA Finals and Eastern Conference Finals before? It makes a lot of sense. But a lot of reports, including Greg Sylvander, including, I think, Anthony Chang also had the report that the Heat are trying to bring Haywood back. And it would be for a much cheaper contract than I anticipated. The 
number floated around on an annual average basis that I've seen is five, six million dollars. So if the Heat could get Haywood Highsmith on a three for 18 or three for 15 million dollar deal, I'm absolutely doing that. As much as Haywood Highsmith is frustrating at times for the Miami Heat because of his inability to do anything offensively outside of a push shot floater or a catch and shoot three, he is still one of the best defenders on the wing in the NBA. And I truly believe that. Sure, there are moments where he gets cooked by the best of the best, like Tatum, Jalen Brown, and that just is going to happen. But on an overall night-to-night basis in the regular season, this is one of the better defenders on the perimeter who can also punch above his weight class and guard some fours. And that's kind of my thing with Highsmith is like, I actually think he could be much more impactful in the NBA if he was used more correctly. Like, I know Eric Spolster is a genius. There's no doubting that. He's the best coach in all sports, in my opinion. But the way that he uses him at times is a little egregious. Like, sometimes Eric Spolster plays him at the four. Like, he's 6'5". Sure, does he have a seven-foot wingspan and he's stocky? Yes. But he should not be playing the four in the NBA. He should be playing the three. Um, So that kind of goes to all the size issues, too, with Miami. But who knows? Maybe Kalal Ware comes on strong. He can play more than we think. You could have Bam and him on the floor together, Jimmy and Highsmith, and have a bigger defensive lineup that could really play really well if you bring Highsmith back. But I would absolutely bring Haywood back if it's only going to cost $5, $6 million a season. We'll see if he ends up re-signing today. Day or if it drags out and another team swoops in, says, hey, we'll give you eight, nine million dollars a season, and that's ultimately too much money for him to pass up, and he leaves Miami, which leaves the Heat having to look for a defensive wing off NBA for AC. Which let's take the conversation there to round out today's show of some NBA free agent targets for Miami as it opens up at 6 p.m. Eastern today. We had a video go out yesterday having 10 names. Russell Westbrook was on that list and he is no longer a free agent. He opted into his contract, which nobody expected him to do. So Russell Westbrook, I know some Heat fans wanted Russ as the backup point guard and to run the second unit for this team. Well, that's no longer an option because he's staying in Los Angeles. But Guys that I think the Heat should have their eye on, and I don't know how much he'll get, and I'm going to continue to pound the table for Torian Prince. I am. I, I, I. Maybe it's this weird obsession of mine that I can't get over, but the former Laker, the former um, Timberwolf, the former Cavalier, like... I am a Torian Prince guy. I think he is a good defender. I think he is a good three-point shooter. He shot 39% last season and got clowned by Lakers fans. They hated him for some reason. But when I watched him in Minnesota, and I watched him in select games in Los Angeles, like I thought he played really, really well. And to me, that would be an excellent replacement for Caleb Martin or Haywood Highsmith off the bench, a 3 and D wing. And we throw the term around 3 and D wings a lot, but Torian Prince is the definition of that. He isn't going to give you anything offensively that is crazy outside of hitting two to three shots a game from beyond the arc and averaging between seven and 10 points like that is his role and I think he plays it extremely well he's not that old he's got some athleticism to him and if you could have him for two to four million dollars a season which it might be the case I don't know what his value around the league is like I could see him getting six seven mil a year I could also see him getting three four million dollars a season and I would absolutely do that like I would do the same exact deal we gave Josh Richardson a uh, one plus one, one year plus player option. So if he plays well and improves his stock, he can test for agency again. But he'd help this Heat team this upcoming year on like $3 million or $4 million. I think that is a very fair offer to Torian Prince, and we'll see if he takes it. Another name I want to keep on mentioning is Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr., one of the most athletic defensive point guards in the NBA. Uh, I've been very outspoken about my want of resigning DeLon Wright on a Vetman deal. Well, if that can't happen, I think Dennis Smith Jr. is the next best option. He's just a more athletic DeLon Wright. He's arguably better defensively, but he's a better athlete. He, not as good as a floor spacer and shooter, but he can attack the glass and put some pressure on the rim due to his athleticism and wingspan. So Dennis Smith Jr. is someone that I'm very intrigued with. A name we didn't talk about on Thursday, or for our Saturday, I should say, but I do want to bring up here before we really get out of here, because we'll just talk about these three. Another Brooklyn Nut, Lonnie Walker. Um, he went to the University of Miami. He knows the area. He is an athletic bench scorer. And to me, I've never thought he got used correctly. And 
you might say the Heat don't need guards and scoring guards, any more defensive guys and pieces to help Jimmy and Bam, and I get that. But I think Lonnie Walker coming off the bench, being the Heat's lead guard off the bench, could be excellent in terms of scoring the basketball. He's athletic. He has a lot to prove. I think Walker is someone that I would absolutely sign for the cheap. And that's really the problem here, right? Is like the Heat only can sign people for the cheap. They, they can't go out there and offer anything really more than like $8 million, $9 million a season. They just simply can't do that. So I think Highsmith at like $6, $7 million a year is the highest they can go for anyone. Um, but other than that, it's going to be a lot of vet men contracts, which is why this like new CBA hurts Miami and the way the roster is currently constructed. Like the only way to really improve this team in a substantial way is through trades. It's not going to be through free agency. So I don't want to kill your enthusiasm for today um, and potentially sway you from not joining us for our live stream. But the Heat are not going to make a blockbuster move in free agency. They just simply can't do it. They have to do it through the trade market, and that is the way I have my eyes out for. So and that's why we always talk about trade rumors, because that's the only way this Heat team can really improve drastically. All right, that's going to do it for this show. Let me know a free agent you want Miami to sign, though. I gave you three that I got my eyes out for, Lonnie Walker, Dennis Smith Jr., and Torian Prince. Drop a name for me down below. Make sure you subscribe because if the Heat do sign anyone, bring anyone back, we are going to make a video. Like I said, we're going to be live, so join us and help us get to 12K before 6 p.m. Eastern time because I will be doing a beer bong on that live show for free if we get to 12K. So hit that sub button. Hopefully, I'll see you then.